Proverbs chapter 3 tonight. Proverbs in the third chapter. Good, a good place to read. Not because it's Proverbs 3, but because it's in the Bible. Amen. All the Bible is given by inspiration of God. That means it's good because God is good and God does good, the Bible says. God, thou art good and thou doest good. Proverbs chapter 3 tonight, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for the message, for the gathering. We ask you, Lord God, to bless those who are here. Lord, those who have just made the effort to be in your house, Lord God, just bless the disseminating of your word, Lord God, let it not return void, as we know that it will not return void, according to your promise, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our title tonight, Trusting God, or Lean Not to Your Own Understanding. Amen. Now, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 7 is one of the well-known, often heard scriptures. It's a scripture that people use for times of struggle to bring comfort, as well it should be. If you were to dissect these three verses, <clears throat> these three verses, you would find that the challenge there is a little more deep than we tend to give it credit for. Because he uses such superlatives as all, all, thy, uh, with all thine heart, all thy ways. He says there these two major, uh, these two, uh, this one word in these two places, this word that is a, that is very extreme because it's, it encompasses everything about us. Now, if we were to focus on giving all to God, that would really keep us busy because the moment you drop below that standard, you're no longer fulfilling this scripture. And yet, he tells us there, all your heart, you're supposed to trust God with. And you're supposed to acknowledge God in all your ways. But do we acknowledge God in all of our ways? Do we... Stir our coffee in Jesus' name. Do we comb our hair in Jesus' name? Do we brush our teeth in Jesus' name? I uh, saw a picture online not too long ago. It was talking about how do you pray for your leftovers. If you've already prayed for them one time, you have to pray for them again. And it's like, what do you pray? Like, God, it's me again with this spaghetti. I'm back with it. And, that's, and what do you say? And I was thinking about that. I was like, well, that does make a little bit of sense. You already prayed for it once. But then the thought occurred to me, are you thankful for it the second time? Then you should pray, right? I mean, even though you pray for it the first time, if you're thankful the second time, you should pray. Amen. And so is it really, is it really realistic for God to call upon us to acknowledge him in all of our ways? It isn't realistic. And God is not realistic. Amen. God is actually quite an unrealistic God as far as the natural is concerned. And so in the natural, God does not call upon you and me to acknowledge him in all of our ways because that is not realistic to do so. But it is possible to acknowledge God in all of our ways when we understand what he means by that and we go about it the right way. So some of you heard me teach this before. How do you acknowledge God in all your ways without it? being unrealistic. Quite simply, every bit of trust in your heart at any given time is placed in God. Amen. All the trust that you can have about everything in your life, all the trust that you can have at any given moment, you acknowledge, he said there, acknowledge, you acknowledge that that trust is placed in God. So it isn't about everything, every action, every thought, all in Jesus' name. It isn't that. 
It is that at any given moment, any time of day or night, any trust that I have in anything is going to all be placed in God. I'm going to acknowledge God with all my ways. I'm going to acknowledge God with all my trust, whether it's my health, my finances, my future, my family. It doesn't matter at any given moment, whether it's 4 a.m., 4 p.m., 12.30 p.m., 1.30 a.m. in the morning. It doesn't matter. Anytime I think about trusting, anytime I think about having trust in God, I'm going to acknowledge that all my trust is in God. Now, doesn't that make more sense? Isn't that more realistic tonight? Yes, it is, because we can always acknowledge that at any given time. God, all my ways are trusted to you. Lord, what did the uh, psalmist write? All my springs are in thee. What is a spring? A well of water. Is, are, was, were wells of water important back then? They're important today. And so everything that is a source in my life, he was saying, it's all in God. That means, he said, all my springs. That means more than one, amen? The spring of your finances, the spring of your health, the spring of your family, the springing water of your future, the springing water of your career, the springing water of your kids, the springing water of whatever, your home and your what, possessions. It's They are all in God. That means if God lets one spring of water get bigger, praise the Lord. That means if another spring of water dries up, it's all in God and he allowed it. Trusting God, lean not to your own understanding. Now that concept of lean not to your own understanding is easy to read. Can you say amen? Yes. It's easy to read it in black and white on a page. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Hallelujah, praise God. I bow my head and go to sleep. That is such a blessing. What a blessed scripture tonight. That's easy. But what about when he says there that when we trust him, we are not we are also to not do something else. We are to not lean to our own understanding. That's a little bit more difficult than you think. Let's talk about it tonight. First, let's talk about trusting God's judgment. Trusting God's judgment by nature and it's okay to admit this so go ahead and admit it to yourself and breathe a sigh of relief because it's all right trusting god's judgment it's okay to acknowledge that by nature we do not always trust god's judgment we just don't because when we because whenever god allows something that our lives to take a certain course there's a part of us that says this ain't right <laughs> you ever been there before that ain't right why ain't it right? Because it happened to me, that's why. <laughs> I mean, that's really our only justification. We're in Proverbs 3 tonight. That's really our only justification. It's all right if it happens to the neighbor, kids. It's all right if it happens to the co-worker's wife or co-worker's husband. It's okay if it happens to uh, my cousin's dog or whatever the case. But if it happens to me, that's not right. God, something's wrong. Well, by nature, we don't trust God's judgments. And that's okay to acknowledge because by nature, we are not in the right nature. When I say by nature, I mean our human nature. We always have a tendency to trust our human nature. So the next time you find yourself doubting whether God's uh, providence in your life is the right thing, recognize you're simply trusting your own understanding. Our title tonight, Trusting God, Lean Not to Your Own Understanding. And so trusting God, number one, trusting God's judgment. Church, we have to trust God's judgment. It's releasing to God's judgment, releasing control to God's judgment, releasing outcomes to God's judgment, releasing happenings in our lives to God's judgment. Whenever we get on an airplane, we don't generally try to sit in the cockpit and make sure the pilot you know, dodges all the birds and turns left and right when he's supposed to, right? We don't typically do that. Think about it. You're sitting in a big fuselage, a big tube, and you can't see out the window. All you see is a seat back in front of you or a wall and people moving around. That's all you see. And, you're, and so we, by nature, we will trust their expertise. 
and we will trust people. But then there are times that life takes a turn and we find ourselves naturally not trusting God's judgments. It's okay to acknowledge that this is the case because it is the case. It doesn't matter how long you pray, there is a part of you that is just not going to trust God naturally. What does the Bible teach us about that? We taught it, not to, we taught it in a Bible study Tuesday night. Whenever we have those imaginations, we simply grab them in the name of Jesus and we cast them down. That's what the Bible teaches us. Because all they are, the thoughts that we have that cause us to doubt God, all they are are imaginations. Because God is the reality. Amen? God is the reality. And anything that counteracts what we know about God, that is an imagination. No matter how much sense it makes, no matter how good it makes us feel in the moment, no matter how realistic it may seem, if it goes against what we know about God, who is reality, then that thought is actually just an imagination. And imaginations are not real. We taught that on Tuesday night, didn't we? About people and their imaginations. And so trusting God's judgment. Let's talk about unanswered prayers. So I said earlier, the, the one reason that we tend to think something is not right is simply because it happened to us. It happened to uncle, you know, somebody and cousin and neighbor and whatever. Yeah, okay, whatever, I'll pray. But if it happens to us, that ain't right. Well, another thing we tend to think isn't right is when our prayers are not answered. If God does not answer a prayer, you got to thank God for that. Because God knows all and he knows what that would have been in your life. So prayers going unanswered do not mean that God is wrong and that he is not listening. It may be that God has something better in store and he doesn't want you and me settling for that thing that makes sense to our very limited thinking. I believe often when we pray, we often pray according to what makes sense to us. Here's a challenge for you. Think of something that is so immense and crazy and would be such an amazing gargantuous blessing but has absolutely almost no possibility of coming to pass. Pray for that. Just pray for it. Just one time. I don't care. Pray for it as you're walking to lunch or something and you never pray for it again. Just think of something that would be so awesome and amazing and would just blow the doors off the whole your whole existence if God let it happen. And say, Lord, I ask you to let that happen. And then go do whatever, all right? I mean, just expand your thinking. And you'll find out just how small your prayers really are, right? You'll find out. Think, uh, thinking of that, about things that are you know, bigger and seemingly have no possibility. I saw a, a meme online recently. And it was posted by a comedian, so it's funny. It's, a hope, it's okay to be funny. And so... It, it, there was a apparently an old Chinese adage, an old Chinese saying that said, if you mock someone, then you will end up just like them. If you mock someone, you'll end up just like them. And then somebody responded and said, ha, 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 Jeff Bezos, ha, 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 Bill Gates, ha, 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 ha. In other words, I want to end up like Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates. He said, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> All right. So think of something so big that it may never come to pass. Pray for that and then go about your business and see what God does. He may not give it to you the way you formed it in your prayer, but he may give you something that you never thought would happen. Amen. All right, so that's trusting God's judgment. Trusting God's leading. Trusting God's leading. God leads his people by the influence of the Holy Spirit. Here's what Paul says in Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. One sign that you are a child of God is that you are learning how to follow God's leading. God's leading. God's leading isn't the pastor saying, hey, you, do this. Hey, you, you should start doing that. Hey, you should stop, stop doing this, and you should start doing that. Hey, that's not the only leading there is in God, amen? The Holy Spirit's leading is whenever he begins to impress upon your heart something that you should stop doing or start doing, whatever that may be. 
You will know that you're growing in God when you start having these impressions that are in line with God's Word and you start following them. One example of this is the prophet Simeon in Luke chapter 2, verses 26 through 28. I'm going to read some of this. Speaking of Simeon, it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Speaking there about when Jesus was born and that the, Lord, the Holy Spirit told the prophet Simeon, you will see the Messiah before you die. Not everyone got that insight. Not everyone got that revelation, but Simeon did. Verse 27 of Luke 2. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. Simeon did. He came by the Spirit. So we find there that Simeon and the prophetess Anna, they stayed at God's house day and night. Maybe they lived there. Maybe they had a room there. Possibly and probably. It's evident they were both in their older years. So it seems as if they had a room in God's house because they would serve in the house of God during the day and then retire to their quarters at night. Well, he apparently was not in the temple at this time, but then the Lord said unto him, Go into the temple, verse 28. And then, there, and then in verse 28, Then took he him up. Simeon picked up Jesus in his arms and blessed God. Simeon had not heard Jesus preaching or even talking about the cross, and yet he believed in Jesus because he believed in those prophecies and promises that God had given from all the way back to Genesis chapter 3, all the way through his current day. He had never heard Jesus preach. He had not heard Jesus preach about the cross. He had not heard any of these things. He had not heard John the Baptist preaching about repenting and the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And yet he believed in Jesus Christ because Jesus was the fulfillment of God's promises. We cannot effectively lead ourselves in the things of God because we need God to lead us in the things of God. No one knows the things of God like God himself. And so therefore, though obviously the Bible gives us, uh, the, the, rather the Lord gives us shepherds in our lives, gives us teachers, the ministers, etc. We are just, as Paul says, we are just men whom God gave just like anybody else. It is the Holy Spirit's leading that we ought to be seeking, that you ought to be seeking. Lord, teach me how to be led by the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to stay on this very long, but I'll just simply touch on it. The Holy Spirit will not lead you to do some crazy, kooky stuff in the name of Jesus. He won't do that. He's not going to tell you to walk into a bar and start preaching to all the sinners and they're getting drunk. No, he's not going to ever tell you to do that. But he also will not tell you to be afraid of being a witness to people either. So where's, where is it at? Somewhere in the middle. Okay, That means that you can always start by inviting people to church. right? You can always take some church cards and invite people to church, but here's what I teach. Wait for the Lord to impress upon you who to invite. You don't have to invite every soul that walks across the ground, okay? Because that's not wise, because you may cause trouble and problems in some area. And this Camp Humphrey's general area is not very big. So we kind of have to be careful how we do things. And the way we've done it here, God has blessed it. It's been very effective. So here's what I do. I've always got church cards on me in my pocket, ready to go. And I'll walk past all kinds of people. I will walk past all kinds of people and, and not invite them. But once I just see someone and I just feel like, hey, I need to invite that person, guess what I'll do? I'll just go invite them. Even if they say no, that's, they don't. God impressing upon your heart doesn't guarantee they're going to say yes. It's simply God saying, I want to give that person another chance. That's what, they, that's what God is saying, even if they say no. Had that happen today, as a matter of fact, really interesting. And I felt, I don't want to say I felt like a super move of God, but I did, I did feel the Lord deal with my heart and go invite him. So I did. He was just, I was coming out of the bank. He was sitting out there near the fountain in front of the bank there in Navy Federal. He's sitting there by himself. And I just felt, go invite him. Okay, I went and invited him. Invited him to church. He said, oh, I tried God. I've tried that God thing. I never really could get into it. I said, okay. I said, well, if you know anybody who would like it, just maybe you could pass it on to them. 
He said, all right, yeah, I'll do that. I said, okay, have a good day. And I walked off. And um, in other words, I'm not going to, I don't feel the need to try to contend with someone for 45 minutes. Oh, you, God's trying to reach out to you again. Oh, the, you know, we got the real thing. Oh, you should really try it this time. I didn't do that. Here's what I did. Okay, well, if you know somebody, maybe give them the card. Have a good day. I started walking. And he said, okay, well, thanks. And as I was walking away, he said, well, 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 well where is it? <laughs> and I said, I, I turned around, went back and explained where we are and all that. He said, okay, all right, well, I won't throw it away. I'll give it to somebody. I said, all right, praise the Lord. So God's been dealing with that man's heart, amen? You can tell God's been dealing with like, well, 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 where is it? <laughs> God's been dealing with his heart. That's how Pastor Fulmer handles those situations when they say, oh, I tried the God thing. Okay, well, if you know a friend, give it to them. Have a good day. Because here's what people don't like. They don't want to be left out. Amen. <laughs> it's a little bit of psychology. You know, uh, salesmen kind of know this. You know, they kind of know how to make, leave people hanging. And so God dealt with me. Leave them alone. Okay, all right, have a good day. Either he will come to church or he'll invite someone else who may come to church. Either way, both he and they got an opportunity. Amen. And they can never say God did not care. And so, therefore, trusting God's leading, I really felt impressed to move, uh, impressed upon to go invite him. He may never come to church. He may die, lo die lost and go to hell for all in the lake of fire for all eternity. But he got an opportunity. Amen? Amen. And so, therefore, what I'm impressing upon you tonight is as you go about your day, just kind of stay, keep a little door of your heart open to feeling God kind of push you toward inviting someone. Well, will it be someone I don't know? Probably. But that's all right. That's called growing in the Lord and developing as a person. Because God's people don't have to be shy and scared. Somebody needs to hear the gospel and they need you to invite them. It may be someone in the ville that you walk past. It may be someone at work. It may be someone at Joy Mart or Panda Palm. It may be someone at E-Mart. It may be someone anywhere. Amen. All right. So trusting God's leading. Next, let's talk about this. Trusting God's character. If you're going to trust God... If you're going to trust God's leading, you're going to have to trust God's character. Now, there are people, I believe, that have a natural tendency to think that if anything bad happens to them, it must be that God is mad at them. That's how they think. They tend to think God is angry at me. God must be judging me. God must be very mad at me right now. Sir, ma'am, that's not the case. If you're trying to serve God, that is not the case. The Bible says that God is angry with the wicked, meaning those who have no care for God, they're not trying to serve God, those who are just pursuing their sins and don't even care about God. They are the ones that God is angry at. Amen? The Bible says that if you sow to the flesh, you'll reap corruption. But if you're sowing to the Spirit and you're striving to live for God, you shall reap life everlasting. So you're going to have to learn to trust God's character. But here is what we as people do. We tend to place upon God things about ourselves. So it could be that if we think if anything bad happens, God is mad at me, maybe we get mad at people a little too easily. And we therefore think God's doing the same thing to us. If we often think God is judging me, even if I'm trying to live right, but this thing happened and God must be judging me for something. Maybe it's because we have a tendency to judge people. Just saying, all right? We tend to put God in a category that we know about ourselves, but we don't want to acknowledge it. And I'm not saying you have to go around telling everybody your problems. You don't have to do that. Here's what we do. We trust in the Lord, and then we say, Lord, I ask you to help me also. Amen. So trust in God's character. In order to experience all the blessings of God, we're going to have to trust God fully. It's not as easy as we think. As I said earlier, it's easy to read it. Oh, that's so easy. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. I like that verse. <laughs> but when it comes time to do it, eh, I don't want to. I don't think so, Lord. Because God will call his people to get out of the boat at an inopportune time. And we know the story about Peter, right? Got out of the boat. Now, Peter was kind of loud and rambunctious and crazy. Lord, let me come out there. All right, come on. And then the time he got out there, he wished he hadn't gone, right? 
A lot of times things look fun until you're in it. I'm just going to say that. But God will call his people out into situations that seem really crazy. So in order to experience the true blessings of God, we're going to have to trust God fully. Even when we don't want to, we must trust God fully. Even when we don't think we should, we must trust God fully. Even if we know a better way, we've got to trust God fully. And only God, now listen, only God can bring us to that place. Pastor Fulmer may say, look, you're kind of holding out on God right here. You're kind of fearful. I notice you're fearful here. I may counsel that, but only God can bring us to the place of understanding ourselves. Lean not to thine own understanding does not mean you will not have understanding. It does not mean you will not have good thoughts. It does not mean you will not have good ideas. You and I may very well have some really good ideas to get us out of our situation. We may, but they're not as good as God's ideas. <laughs> they're not as good as God's ideas. And then one more place. Just for me, come on, please. Isaiah 55, verse 9. God says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now there's a phrase, let go and let God. You ever heard that phrase? Let go and let God. It's more than just a wristband cliche in the Christian's life. 